let, let me please welcome uh, Mr. Brian, uh, architect Ibrahim Al Jada. Architect Ibrahim Al Jada is a well known Qatari architect. Ibrahim, uh, uh, I believe, started with Ashgal and then uh, changed to the private sector and owned uh, the first office open in Qatar back uh, in the early, I believe, 50s. And, uh, Ibrahim raised that office to the uh, uh, international level. Uh, uh, today's lecture will be about the Yahya Stadium. Uh, in this lecture, we will start. Uh, Ibrahim will give us a detail. Uh, how did he win the competition? How did he choose the design? Everything. Uh, please welcome uh, architect Ibrahim Al Jada. He is a winner. Uh, uh, a winner of uh, uh, the competition. Please welcome Rahim Al uh, Rahim, the floor is yours. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum and good evening, everybody. Uh, it's a great pleasure. Thank you, Abdullah, for the invitation uh, to share this wonderful journey, which we are uh, yet to complete. Uh, I'll take you briefly about. Uh, AEB, the firm, uh, it's, uh, because it's part actually of the history of Qatar. Uh, like Abdullah said, it was the first firm to be established in the state of Qatar in 66. And uh, we have a paper giving the permission to the late Jamal Abdul Halim to start the firm. In 91, I came back from the States in 88. In 91, I purchased the firm. Uh, there was an opportunity that wasn't even planned, but there was uh, seven people there. And throughout the years, we, with the good team, with hard work, we built it up to 600, 700. We reached in some stages, depending on some of the projects. But we are averaging 600 uh, persons working uh, within the region. Some of the projects we do, we I personally enjoy doing hospitality projects. But some of the, uh, I've been honored to do landmarks, ministries, embassies. Uh, municipalities for the state of Qatar. Uh, a lot of them have been won through competition, but uh, I'm also honored to be directly commissioned to, to, to do some of the landmarks. Uh, and one few were nominated for the Aga Khan for a couple of times, got the Arab Cities Awards a few times, the Islamic Cities Award, and quite few recognitions. And I'm proud to even have the gold medal of the Appreciation Medal of the State of Qatar. Uh, part of, of me is the nonprofit part, which is research. I have a small department within the firm archiving old drawings. Uh, being the oldest firm in the world, I put my hand into original ink drawings, more than 1,300 drawings of the first banks that we are built in Qatar. Uh, palaces, uh, uh, and I still have them. The National Qatar National Library has been kind enough to teach us how to preserve them and to ar archive them. And I'm, uh, of, as soon as I do that, I will offer them online through the Qatar National Library, as I feel this, this is not my own. It is for the nation, to, for the younger generations to benefit from. So doing that, I've been putting a lot of this uh, into research and publishing it in books. The last one was the Qatari style, uh, as there was no references whatsoever for the interiors. So that that became, a, hopefully, a, a, a beginning of a reference for the local interiors. And now working on a very exciting book, which is the early modern. So uh, the beginning of the oil period up to the 70s. And there, I found some really wonderful treasures which hopefully uh, by next year, uh, it will be out. The awards, we spoke about them, a lot of recognition. Interestingly, when you enter into competitions, it just makes you a lot better because under pressure and under challenges, you, you, get, you get the best out of you and your team. We, we all work hard to achieve that. And uh, it's, it's a good moral booster also when you win such awards. And then that day, I remember, uh, I was with my wife and kids. Uh, we, as optimistic as we were, uh, thinking that we, you know, we have a chance to win. 
but really it was too good to be true to really win, beat the biggest nations in the world and uh, some people. But I think the way Qatar has played it, really played it right as we represent the region, the Arab region, the Islamic region, which never hosted it, hosted this wonderful event. And uh, I think it worked out quite well. So well that it surprised everybody uh, that we, we won such a competition it even it's even created some jealousies as we all see the challenge you know all the other stadiums were done by star architects and people that done stadiums and uh, all we wanted is to get an opportunity and i didn't think i would get a, such an opportunity i've never done a stadium before uh, and nor have been a football player uh, <laughs> not much of a football player at all so we get this competition uh, to compete among international firms that have done stadiums around the world. Interestingly, the, the competition came describing the, the local Gahfiya as a local element. Uh, and it goes on describing the culture, the importance of the culture, but it referred to the Gahfiya. And sitting and brainstorming with my team I said I could make a bit that all the international firms, the architects, uh, most of them haven't worn a gafiya, uh, supposedly being Western architects, uh, would go very abstract, not in a direct manner. So I was focusing on to represent the gafiya as is, but in an extremely contemporary uh, solutions. But when you see it, it's a gafiya, you don't have to guess if it's inspired by something else to look like a gafiya. And we have to assemble again. I mean, once we, as soon as we, I was in, in the summer, I got a phone call winning uh, to announce we won. I almost fell as I was standing off. I didn't, you know, I was so happy that we won such an important thing. And the, the most exciting part that, you know, this is happening in your country and you're playing a part of this celebration of being an ambassador of your country, showing the world uh, about your country. It's just it's beyond winning a project uh, as uh, financial or as uh, ego. No, it's, it's way beyond that. But then how do you put all this together? So we started uh, researching. It's a 40,000 seats that will become 20,000 seats uh, in the legacy. I'll explain to you all of that. It's air conditioned. So it, it had elements, uh, unique elements. Uh, that evening, it was a Ramadan when we got the competition. I really was going crazy studying what is the gafiya. So I go to the old souks and buy all sorts of gafiyas and trying to imagine these as you blow, blow them up in scale because they had different geometric uh, patterns. And interestingly, as you dig deep, we've been, our gafiyas been influenced by different gafiyas as uh, from Yemen to Oman to the whole region. And you know, all North Africa, all the way to Asia, they, they wear the, the head covers that are similar to these gafiyas. So uh, the circular part, they call it a nera. Nera is the gold coin. Uh, I thought I would use this round, but I wanted to put a horizontal element and a wavy element that it will blend uh, in a way that when it's a building, proportions, aesthetics, and even the little openings here and there will make sense. So came up with this. And I remember the day we submitted the competition, we actually, uh, I had uh, my lead architect working with me, uh, Umi. Uh, she managed to go and get a tailor to tailor an actual gafiya with the same pattern. And we put it on, on a little round thing. And this was part of our submission, an actual gafiya with the patterns that you see. And the sketches got developed uh, and as we were developing these sketches this is the competition time before the the award we went through several uh, attempts but i insisted uh, that we go for more literal uh, translation of the gafiya and as you see these are from the uh, sketches that came up that we came up with and the challenging part also being close to the airport you would want a roof that will represent still the same theme because it will be visible from the airplane. And of course, all the cameras usually 
on such a big events will come from everywhere. We had to put, uh, we were leading, as, as we were won the competition, we were leading, but I had to put 20 consultants uh, interested uh, from all over the world, really. I mean, for such, such a thing, you got from project management to the traffic impact, uh, catering, security, landscaping, structure, yeah. IT, topography, 20 consultants from all over. And the, the joy of having uh, workshops and, and teamwork uh, really results into something unique and special. Uh, and as we were progressing, we learned a lot from every specialty. Now, the site, uh, the site has, has, we didn't select the site, of course, the, the, uh, the Supreme Committee selected the sites based on not only uh, uh, arrival and uh, accessibility, but also for the legacy, what these sites are going to be used after the event. And as we've seen in South Africa and even in uh, Brazil, some of these big monuments turned out to be big white elephants. And it was extremely interesting as the competition within part of the competition is that you have to address the legacy, which I will, I will show you a little bit more in details. What do you end up with? Uh, what are you going to do with all these stadiums? Especially being a small geographical uh, country and even smaller city. And it's, it was very wise of the Supreme Committee to how to develop them for the, uh, for the after the competition, which we, they call the legacy. This is the site, the, it's quite unique site. Interestingly, it, it, it borders the edge of a huge neighborhood, uh, Altamama neighborhood, which is uh, heavily populated with, with mostly locals, but it's, it's, it's a mixed, but it's a big uh, uh, development of different houses uh, over there and schools and so on. So that helps for also the legacy part. And the urban integration, we had to integrate, uh, to, uh, how do we integrate this into the urban context uh, in, in the different modes and in the different stages, the accessibility. Uh, as we go, I will show you a little bit more on that a little bit further and further details. Now, the key things, the Supreme Committee has certain standards they want to achieve. They want to make the state-of-the-art stadiums uh, that would be the, the latest in technology and aesthetics. Uh, and of course, it was very important for them that it celebrates the culture of the region and, and of Qatar. Safety and security is important. And uh, I think a big added value being a local firm that whatever we design is we are complying with the local regulations and local specification and the standards of Qatar. So it's buildable, it's feasible, and that has been proven as the work went on to the site. And the FIFA, the FIFA after every event, they would modify their manuals to the latest standards and they go by it by the nitty gritty. Actually, they do inspections, as you see in the media, when, when a team come, they would go and inspect uh, in details all their elements, which I'll show you some of these elements. And the function, the, the bowl is, as you see in the section below, uh, consists of different layers and levels uh, from the en different entrances of the players to the VVIP, where do they stage the media, uh, the spectators, uh, and there are unique also VIP launches. There is the VVIP, which is the royal uh, area, but there's also a lot of VIPs, uh, separate cubicles that, that are scattered in different locations. And then you consider the legacy mode. The, the rendering on the left, it shows the, uh, the walkway around this big ball, how it's covered with the, with the screen uh, of the Gahfiya, creating a beautiful walkway around it. So this is where the public is going to enter, whether you're buying your tickets or your food, and then you would access to the different places. Now, the state of the art technology, and considering that this is going to finish by uh, or the event is going to happen 
later in the 22, I would imagine that with your phone, you'll be able to know uh, where is your seat, where is the closest from food stall to the toilets, to the exits and so on. So it's really is gonna be the state of the art uh, stadium. But the legacy, what do we do? And I will show you a different section, but there are smaller sections here. Basically you remove the upper tier, which is the 20,000 seats in the upper tier. And you would ins we were required to install an SPTAR uh, as a medical center for, health, for sports. And it will host also the two local clubs, most likely Ahli and Arabi, one or two of them. And there will be a boutique hotel also. Uh, and boutique hotel also it's been announced that it's going to happen in Al-Bayt Stadium in Al-Khor uh, Stadium and it's going to be I think unique that you will be able to stay in a boutique hotel within a stadium whether there is an event or not and uh, as we know that most of these stadiums eventually not going to be only a football but you could have a concert you could have many different events to, that could be hosted in, in, in these uh, state-of-the-art buildings. The structural element, uh, we worked with a German firm and these guys do all the things that cannot be done in the most economical way and doable way. Uh, and it was a, a wonderful learning curve how they put together and I'll show you some examples of how intelligent where the, the structure becomes sensitive to, to the design and how you can benefit from the structural element. And this is, I think, the, the benefit of the teamwork and working together. That's the bare uh, naked bowl. Uh, you see a lot of stadiums when you travel around the world, they just look like that without the skin. So the skin really protects it, which makes sense as a gahfiya protecting the head, it's protecting the stadium and creating the, the theme for it. And also it's uh, controlling the wind flow uh, as our, all our stadiums are uh, air conditioned. And this will show you some of the elements where the hospitality uh, surrounding uh, the area, but they get, you got the media uh, raised up. Uh, in another presentation I was doing, they asked that the media usually are at the pitch. These are not the media, these are the media that write and and talks for other TV stations and radio station. The guys at the pitch usually are the cameramen that are shooting. And then you got the, VV, the VVIP, of course, which is the royal uh, stand, and then the VIPs uh, over there. And then the hospitality facing them. And all of these are set actually by the FIFA. Now, when we talk about FIFA compliance, it's, it's quite an extensive, uh, extensive but I'll show you, I mean, these, these are some examples, even the, the angles and the height to achieve the full sight. Now, even though most of the stadiums, for example, in, in this particular stadium, we are announcing that it's uh, 40,000 seats, but in, in reality, it's not really 40,000, it's 44 to 45,000. Uh, some would vary, but some of the seats are not really actually not calculated as per the FIFA compliance. So they are calculating only the seat that with a perfect view. So the rest are available, but uh, they will not be in, in the math of the calculation. And then the structure. Now, as we've seen in the rendering, uh, the Gahriya the patterns, and usually being uh, semi-transparent skin, uh, any structural element that go behind it, it's gonna ruin the patterns. But uh, these guys really came up with a very interesting cable uh, structure held in these uh, columns that sort of uh, depict the, the patterns themselves. So as now when we go to see test the lighting from the inside to the outside, any shading created by these cables is only enhancing the beautiful patterns that has been created. And you can see all these diamond shapes patterns on a larger scale and it shrinks. All these cables are holding the structure together and holding the skin uh, together. And this is why I'm saying, you know, you challenge the structural engineers and they give you solutions that would definitely complement your pattern. And I, I really admire uh, such genius solutions. 
Now, all of this complexity with the, the structure and their conditioning elements, the electrical, you name it, the skin, uh, I mean, without the BIM, it would have been a catastrophe, especially during the, now, during the construction, as you detect so many uh, different detections that are happening. Uh, so it really helps. And eventually, this is, the contractor is going to turn this to the highest level to where even during the operation, they will have this at, uh, at a higher level of BIM for, for the main, during the operations and maintenance. But really, BIM have uh, became extremely useful. And that, you know, with, this, with the standards that the Supreme Committee was uh, demanding, it has really upgraded even our capability. And this is what I think part of the, the whole uh, FIFA thing, the added value to the nation, not only in terms of, of buildings or event or exposure, but it, the added value goes all the way down to improving the, the engineering capability of, of the local firms, of the local engineers, of the people working within this, this country. I, I think the, the added value goes really to an extreme. And this is, you know, we're talking only about architecture and engineering. Imagine in the media and the tourism industry, they're preparing all the young, youngsters to be geared up to do, uh, to do this at international level. This is the, the shapes that we have discussed. The, the dark ones are actually openings. And as you study and with the consultants that study the wind flow, the heat analysis, which I'll show you example, how much wind goes in and how does it affect the, the air conditioning system and how does it achieve the aesthetical uh, uh, requirements that we, we wanted to achieve. And that part precisely was my personal part, the, the, to continue achieving the aesthetical uh, requirements to look like a gafriya. And it does look, it, it has a, a nice appearance from the outside, whether it's daytime and at nighttime, it just glows in a, in a nice way. There was one, at the, when they started, there was a couple of strips put and I went there in the evening and as the light comes up, of course, we had some challenges of glow and so on, which is being fixed, which is normal. Uh, but it, it really, at night, is going to look uh, totally different. And from the inside, all through these openings, the, it diffuses daytime, it diffuses the sunlight, it creating wonderful shade and shadows uh, inside that atrium that I've showed you. This is a, a bare rendering here on, on the right, as you see. And of course, the patterns uh, on the roof uh, continue the, the, the storytelling. Now, part of uh, what we've done, I wanted to take this into the interiors. Mainly, uh, I was taking care of the VIP and the VVIP, as the, the rest of the public areas were done by the sports specialists because they wanted you know, to more of a functional. But uh, for the VIP, we wanted to use these patterns not only in the ceiling, but on the right bottom, uh, this is in the VVIP area. I proposed, and thank God they, they have approved it, to create a little museum of gahfiyas, celebrating the gahfiyas. From, I would imagine, from a cowboy hat all the way to an Afghani little short hat, to uh, Algerian beautiful head cover, and so on. And uh, I'm following up with the SC. I thought I will do some of the collection. I have collected already a few of them, but the SC has already communicated even with the embassies uh, foreign embassies in the state of Qatar to collect these gahfiyas. So there'll be a little gahfiya museum celebrating these gahfiyas. And the landscaping, we worked with a, a gentleman, HED, out of the UK, Simon. This guy uh, can write uh, poetry about when he does the landscaping and when he does uh, even the presentation. But we wanted to continue the use of the patterns whether it's in the Gafiya or the Arabic patterns, extend it all the way to the landscaping. And the circular shapes, we one it became sort of dominant. So in the legacy on the left side, you see the little circles, there will be an aquatic center, a multi-purpose hall. Even I just finished designing a small masjid, a mosque 
uh, rounded, very contemporary, which will be put on that side. We saw the circle will dominate uh, the shapes, the geometric shapes over there. Uh, giving you just examples, the analysis that they do on the solar daylight, it's interesting, the, the opening. And as you see in the bottom left, opening these red dots, these are the actual openings on the roof. But why would you do more on this side, less than that side? They want to get maximum and they do this animation, taking the building and they animate the sun movement to make sure from the, the little dots that you see that the sun covers most of the green, uh, the pitch actually, because so for the grass to grow well, and if it doesn't hit it well, they will have to use artificial lighting for it to grow. So they, it's a challenge that you get maximum light throughout the day, throughout the season uh, to your pitch. Imagine, the, I mean, the, the, the details that, it's the fun details that you learn from your colleagues as you're working to develop that. The air quality, which shows you the dark, there is more prevailing wind, less prevailing wind. How does that affect and goes through the little openings that you have created? And how does this eventually wash the, your air conditioning? Because you got a challenge here for, with your air conditioning system. And you study the impact not only in a structural point of view, but also in, in the sense of the air conditioning and thermal. Point of view. And that's the cooling and these graphs below shows you this hot wind as it goes. Does it actually suck the air conditioning system that you are blowing, you're trying to cool it because you're, you're still in the open at the end of the day. Safety, now getting 40,000 people to come in and to go out, segregating the different spectators. Thank God we don't have uh, people fighting uh, a lot in the football pitch. Uh, like some other places, but uh, you need to segregate them. But during emergency, you need to vacate all these places really fast to empty the places. So the means of egress has to, to be studied extremely carefully, fulfilling, of course, uh, an NFPA and the, uh, the requirements of the FIFA. The crowd modeling, again, this is, we, we land it and we, we, we build this capability in-house. There are softwares that will calculate the number of people that, that you're anticipating, say 40,000. You can see on the site, we are using the site across the street with a temporary bridge because people will be parked there. But even within your site, people will be parking. How do you segregate them? Whether it's a VIP, whether it's team A or team B, uh, how they would move. And you would have to literally model this in a crowd modeling software. So you, all your assumptions and assessment becomes uh, scientifically proven uh, to be correct. And you see in these little blue things, these are the, the, the security controls. Uh, the, you determine the number of security controls based on the crowd and how you segregate them. As they walk, they will go to these paths. You will, the wayfinding is gonna be important for this to succeed. And of course, traffic impact. Uh, now, Ashgal, as they were designing, uh, they knew that there is a stadium coming there and the, the junctions that we've seen now, uh, I salute Ajval every week or every other week, they're opening a new tunnel or a new bridge. And these junctions now, as you drive there, it's, it's amazing uh, how it connects. Uh, interestingly, we've been commissioned to design uh, the, the artwork for one of the tunnels to, to depict the Gahfiya patterns. So, We've done that and hopefully it will be executed. So to prepare you for the Gahfiya mood as you are approaching the stadium. There was an existing cooling plant. We had to upgrade it and integrate it. So you study the existing and how you add to it. And with all the air conditioning system. And there in the section, it shows you where we stack these units and how the air would flow. Uh, under the seating, there will be air flowing to cool for the spectators, but naturally all this, the, the cool air is gonna fall down into the pitch, cooling the pitch into a temperature that is acceptable. And then of course, the, all the data, security, safety, alarm systems, how this is gonna be integrated and and that is a quite a complex thing and we have specialist consultants 
studying this and all of this eventually going to be integrated to to a central control system to control uh, all these sensitive uh, elements so we managed to get a four star gsas which was a, an interesting challenge uh, but that we we do quite a bit of gsas now all our buildings we managed to get uh, four stars uh, in many, many different type of buildings, but for a stadium to do it is also was an interesting learning curve. The plan modes. So you got really uh, the base build mode, which is what you're going to construct during the construction now in preparation for the event. Then you got the tournament mode. Now, while we are building now, we have to make provision for the tournament mode. As you've seen during many events, there will be tents for media, for security, uh, temporary, a lot of temporary structure that you have to put within the vicinity to make this operational. Uh, so they call that tournament mode. And tournament mode, we had even uh, a talented uh, Brazilian architect uh, that practiced that uh, during the event in Brazil, was part of our team, and her job was to coordinate with the Supreme Committee for the requirements of the tournament mode. And then uh, the legacy mode. The legacy mode after the, uh, the cup is uh, hopefully stays in Qatar, uh, the cup is awarded, then what do we do with these stadiums? And this is gonna be the legacy mode where you add the additional buildings that will complement as the teams will move there. And I'll show you some of the sections that's gonna go there. That's the tournament mode. All these little dots, the green and the blues are different factions and different elements that you have to prepare during the, uh, the tournament mode. And the legacy, so this is supposedly how it's, uh, it's going to look like in legacy. People living close to there will be lucky because they're going to have a park like the Aspire Zone, like any park. I live near Al Arabi, a club, but it's, it's only a club. It doesn't have all these gardens and all these elements, but it does make a, really a big impact. And these, like I said, these little round shapes are going to be aquatic centers, multi-purpose, and different functions. And then the this is what I was explaining about the upper tier. So this whole upper tier, the 20,000 spectators, this is done on a steel structure that can be dismantled and removed. And once we do that, we put all these layers of boutique hotels, and we'll put the aspetar as uh, we said, and the, the, the clubs uh, over there within this. So structurally, we had to allow for all these functions to come to, to come and to plug in, to allow it not to, uh, structurally, electromechanically, and, and all these aspects, even power-wise. And this shows you a, a section to where these nice contemporary elements will come and, and be built there, whether it's the, the clinic, the boutique hotel, or the, the local clubs. Of course, we'll put one club on one side and the other on the other side. And there are enough training pitches outside for both clubs to continue training. And that's really an interesting legacy for continuity. And of course, these existing clubs now are holding locations within the city, like, uh, for example, Arabi or al -Lahli, being if these are going to be the ones the, the structure is going to be removed to create more parks for the neighborhoods. Construction, uh, it's like a, really like a dream. I drive by there, like most of the building, all the buildings that I do, I dream and stand and stare at the cranes and imagine it ready and imagine even hearing the, the crowd whistle and the scream. Uh, but it's, it's, time goes by and you see it coming up and I wasn't. I was there a couple of months ago. The, the, I'm used to scales of buildings. We do multi-story buildings. We do uh, the malls. And they all have scale. But when you sit in the middle of this, I really had goosebumps. Uh, quite proud to be part part of this whole big team that put this together. And it started coming up. Now a lot of you drive by there, and you can see the shape. You know, a lot of uh, buildings that architects do or we do, you do the rendering and the rendering looks so wow, but when it's finished in context, it looks okay. Uh, I mean, compared to the rendering, 
I think this this particular uh, example is is going to look better than the renderings for sure because these are actually pictures and look at these patterns they they just uh, look like it, they've been rendered actually they are too good uh, very nicely done uh, with the, the contractors and the material selected and the team managing it and that's a picture actually in the center from the roof uh, and that's why i said you know the airplanes especially when the north prevailing wind is there they're all going to come from the south and one way or another uh, the 12 15 million passengers flying to qatar are going to look at this so we made sure it looks uh, as good as it's from the sides that's all I got to say. I hope this was ex explained it uh, enough to, to know the journey, the, this wonderful journey that we went through for the stadium. Thank you, Brahim, for this uh, great lecture and a great project. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you in the inauguration of this project, uh, the opening ceremony, not the of the opening ceremony and uh, inshallah they win our team won the first game in this stadium i know that the first game not in this stadium but hopefully any game they play in this stadium they win it uh, uh, okay now we will open for the questions uh, let's see who has a question any questions Okay, I will start with uh, uh, the first question. What is uh, uh, the size of the stadium in terms of area? Well, built like the, up area or, uh, the built up area is not really in my mind now. I know it's a, a 40,000 seat, but the built up really, I, I haven't put that in my little what notes. The, okay, another question. What is the program since there is a lot of change? will be in the stadium itself, uh, donating the 20,000 seat and building a uh, different project. Uh, it would be similar to what happened in the Asian game with Hamid Hasbro. Uh, well, the... Uh, uh, there's like a program. How long will it take? Oh, the transition from... Yes. Uh, well, there are... Uh, yes, transition uh, period uh, from uh, just a stadium. The base built, which we're, what we're doing now, and we're making the provision for the uh, the event. Uh, do you, I think the, I would suppose this is for the operators, but let's say five, six months before the event, you'll start seeing tents coming up, structures coming up during the event. But the legacy mode, after the event is over, uh, it's all up to the Supreme Committee how fast they're going to start dismantling and, and putting the the new elements in it. Uh, considering that there's a few stadiums that are going to have a similar approach into a legacy mode. Uh, the program of the transition, I really, they haven't really announced it, but I would suppose uh, after the event, uh, I think few couple of months after the event, they're going to start because there is a, an ambitious plan uh, to continue uh, events happening in Qatar. Now, would we host another event that we need another 40,000 and we have to put back the 20,000 seats? That's definitely, I don't think it's gonna happen because we will have enough stadiums of different scales. So we can continue hosting. The Khalifa Stadium is, is 80 plus, uh, 60 plus thousand seats. So with that, with uh, Lucille, with Rayyan, with uh, the Al Bayt, I think we would have enough to continue hosting even after the reduction of the seats. How about the, the metro or the train? Is it connected to the stadium? No, there is nothing really close to this, but they are doing a shuttle uh, to the closest couple of stations. But there is no station actually that's popping up there. But I know it's in their next plan because already there has been a discussion to put one uh, across the street from it. Eduardo, do you have um, a question? Yes, uh, hello. Can yes. you hear me? Yes. Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Is that a very, just a very quick question? Um, so, first of all, obviously, thank you so much for the presentation. And this is going to be, I remember exactly where I was 
and who I was with when they announced that the World Cup was coming to Qatar. But it's going to be a huge event, and obviously, you know, you're taking part of it must be a crowning achievement. And I think this actually is the most special stadium because um, obviously the, the logo that Qatar chose for the World Cup is also a part of the Qatari headgear. So it just makes sense that this stadium is the, the cap that goes with, with the logo of the, of the World Cup. Uh, my question was, I just wanted to ask you what you wanted or what you hope people will feel as they come and visit the stadium. So when the World Cup starts in two years, inshallah, I just want to ask you, you know, how you imagine people to, to react to the stadium when they're walking into it, when they're driving around it, as they're coming to the games. Just, you know, what do you hope, what do you think that people will be thinking about or imagining about the shape of the stadium when they come to watch the games there? I mean, it, uh, interesting uh, question. And I think this is going to happen in this stadium, in Al Bayt Stadium, the, the ones that are literal into the culture and all the other wow monuments that we uh, has been created as a stadium. But uh, imagine somebody from Ecuador or somebody from Thailand or, you know, from especially the, the, the far nations coming here and they would walking in into the stadium and say this is their headgear and I'm sure this is they, they're going to see locals uh, around and they'll say this is their headgear and then the sense of surprise how this uh, concept as you walk in and to see this structural elements the shading devices the geometrical patterns I think it's going to keep really a serious memory for them to go back and I think the message that the state of Qatar, uh, Qatar is going to make into a culture of celebrating the Middle East, really, for all these people from all over the world coming and going back, they will definitely go back with a memory different from the rest of the tournaments that happened, because it's, it's, it's driven, identity-driven, uh, personality-driven into it. So I think the memory, whether it's this stadium or other stadium, is, is going to keep, keep a really a serious uh, a nice impact and mm -hmm. for contemporary stadiums being a small country and in a small, uh, relatively small city uh, this is going to be a literally like a, a, a museum of the most state of the art uh, stadiums I mean the Norman Foster Stadium the Zaha Hadid Stadium and all these other stadiums that has a story that relates I think it's going to be uh, quite uh, interesting memory that all the visitors to Qatar is going to have in their minds. Absolutely. Thank you. Any other question? Jabuk? Jabuk, go ahead. Yes. Uh, I want to thank you first for the presentation. It was wonderful presentation. Presentation. The first question, what is the material used for the facade, for the cladding? It's a GRC or? No, it's a PTF material. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's like a strong fabric that is uh, semi-transparent, but it's amazing. Um, uh, it's produced in China uh -huh. and it, it's supposed to last for many, many, many years. Uh, uh, but it's, uh, it's a very strong type of fabric. PTF. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Can, 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 can I ask about, about the same material? Because uh, I've seen that during the installation, uh, when you guys install the material, it looks um, a, a little bit yellowish, but, but uh, out of a sudden, it appears like with the sun is changing to full white. I know, we were actually freaking out because it was yellow. And I was saying, this looks like a dirty gafi. It hasn't been washed for a long time. <laughs> and my, my engineers were saying, it's, you just wait and see. And it's literally, as they were putting layer after layer, they, they are yellow. And throughout, in a couple of weeks with the UV, they turn out to be perfect white. You would think it's on the contrary. You would put it white and then as it ages, it becomes yellow. But no, it, uh, it was a very good observation. Yeah, thanks. Question? Uh, go ahead. Yes, okay. Go ahead. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Hello. I would like first to thank you for your uh, great presentation and for the project as well. 
uh, actually I had two questions uh, I would like to ask you about your personal experience what was uh, like uh, the hardest thing during the whole process or the challenging thing for you during the whole process of the construction and the design part I would like uh, to hear more from you and also I would like to know uh, if uh, I've seen actually uh, like um, great analysis about um, I don't know the crowd modeling the traffic impact and many other things uh, but for example some researchers have been critic uh, have been criticizing um, recently like the um, the use of stadiums after uh, uh, after these kind of events so did you um, did you think of Ki uh, of any kind of uh, uh, flexibility or another function for for this kind of stadium for the further uh, future because this problem for example happened too much in Brazil uh, yeah after uh, the Rio de Janeiro uh, event and it happened also the same for uh, Greece so I don't know if you have uh, any vision for that thank yeah. you the, the first part is the difficult, the challenges. Now, uh, I've done throughout my career more than a thousand buildings. So doing buildings was, you know, a normal thing. But as you know, the first hotel I did was extremely challenging. And the first bank I did was challenging. And then you get to know them and now they become your bread and butter. So it's like a young guy goes learning how to swim. Uh, in the swimming pool, but then he's ready for the big competition and you throw him in the ocean and it's the real competition. So when when we won this uh, competition, we sat with the team and we started saying, oh my, how are we going to put this together? Uh, and then we started, you know, counting the, 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 the consultants, the specialists. And I really must uh, thank and salute the Supreme Committee for really sort of guiding us and helping us into into achieving this because they were extremely uh, helpful I, I remember during the the jury of the competition the jury was consisting of people visiting people from different places of the world and i remember this lady asks me uh, you know you seem to have done a lot of buildings but you've never done a stadium and i said yeah i've never done a stadium but i've been invited to compete uh, to do the stadium and thanks to the committee that have allowed me to do there is always a first timer so the challenge was how to put it together but you know with the team uh, our own uh, team and the, 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 the number of consultants put together the support of the client uh, it became uh, a reality and it happened your second part the white elephant uh, what do you do with these monsters I have explained this maybe you missed it in the first part but all these, the 40,000 is going to become 20,000. We remove the upper tier. We'll put clubs there. We'll put a boutique hotel. We'll put even uh, Aspetar Hospital because Aspetar has become such a, su su a great success story. I mean, sports, famous superstars of sports are coming to do their medication here. So it's going to branch out uh, into this. So there won't be any white elephants because also the surrounding becomes a park uh, and if you you see it happening in some of the neighborhoods now when there are stadiums it's jammed with people walking in the evenings i see it even in my neighborhood uh, with us i think uh, roberto molina is a specialist in uh, bim uh, if you have any questions roberto go ahead if you have any questions regarding the bim because they've done a bim for this problem. I, I didn't do it myself, so don't, <laughs> <laughs> don't test me, please. <laughs> Did you struggle a lot with it? Not really. Again, it's all about people. We were fortunate. We, we had a couple of genius young guys that uh, love the bim. And when we were uh, asked to come and, and to show our capabilities, uh, the team have done uh, wonderful presentation now the challenge was you got some some is being eventually that you when, when you put it together some is done in germany some is done in london some is done in uh, uh, the far east so mm -hmm. to put all this together was a challenge but there was no st 
struggle really it's a, it's a good lesson learned they didn't call me they didn't call me to complain about my team so something has gone right you bet you bet it did congratulations thank then you. Yeah. thank you thank you a question uh, mr jeda uh, this is sindhu here can i ask a question go ahead certainly yes yes go ahead, go ahead. Uh, what was the most fascinating uh, thing for you um, while while the stadium was coming live, uh, while while it was getting uh, constructed? What was the most fascinating detail of the stadium that uh, you know that you were waiting to see it come live? Was it the gaffia? The scale when they the started scale. putting the I mean the scale when I stood hmm. there before, uh, when they only put one piece of the facade. Uh, the scale mm -hmm. itself was fascinating because this is the biggest thing in terms of area that I have done in my career uh, as, as a, a span, 40,000, you could hear them really mm -hmm. scream. But when the facade starts coming up, this is the thrilling part. Uh, I was standing like, like a child, mm -hmm. uh, excited child there. Uh, I stay near, I, I stay in Altumama and I see it every day. It's one of the most beautiful stadiums for me too. Thank you for, uh, for designing it in this way. Thank you so much for the presentation as well. Thank you for this compliment. Uh, thank you so much, Sindhu. Hey, a, co a comment regarding the area of the stadium. It is uh, 517,935 uh, square kilometers. And uh, the zone, the total area of the uh, zone 46 is 3,747,000. 443 square meter, which is a huge part of the zone. Wow. Is this in Google? <laughs> no, no. No. <laughs> no, it's from urban planning. <laughs> oh, you have access to all these things. <laughs> have you had a okay, chance to... Yeah, I have a question. Uh, in, in, in light of the of the pandemic and uh, and the and the rate and the, and the rise of the esports, has your has your 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 company your firm done any any studies about the future of stadiums, uh, the model itself? Uh, it hasn't changed in many in thousands of years, right? But do you think that do you do you anticipate any changes in the design in, in the experience in the way we use them? Is that something you have done any any research or any any put any thought into it? Very much so. Uh, not in stadiums alone, but on 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 buildings. During while this was happening, and as we started working from home, I started thinking: uh, when we go back, is, are things going to be the same or not? Mm -hmm. Definitely not. So immediately we did a brainstorming session in all the different disciplines within the firm, and. Uh, whether it's interior design or air conditioning, you know that there are paints that are anti-bacterial uh, paints. Mm -hmm. You know there are handles, door handles that are antibacterial. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in the air, within the air conditioning system, there are special type of lights that you can put uh, some sort of a radiation in your air, in your duct that will mm -hmm. kill all the germs. Evidently, it's, they are using this already in Qatar and the, our uh, airport. Mm -hmm. So we calculated all of these elements and we put it together as a package and we send it to our clients. How do we go back? And we can do like a, a, an audit on every building, how to come back with minimum intervention. And now as we design the new buildings, I would definitely, we would allow for uh, these elements uh, uh, in, in the future because mm -hmm. any client you would tell him that he would be uh, sort of uh, uh, pandemic uh, ready in case of anything happen, uh, you would do it definitely differently. I mean, mm -hmm. even to the house. Mm -hmm. Now you would need definitely one or two offices for the kids, for, for the parents, a space that, that you could work from because it could happen. Now they say a lot of people are not, a lot of corporation are saying they're going to stay into, a lot of people are going to work. I have a friend that he's in the oil and gas and he's renting two floors in one of the buildings. This is a story in Doha. He said, I'm, I'm vacating one of the floors. We're working perfectly well from home. Mm -hmm. So now we have to gear up the homes 
to, to create this environment. So if I'm doing a multi-story building, I would have to allow for spaces, not only within the individual unit, but for the groups to, to get together in a protective manner. So definitely things are not going to be, hopefully this, this is going to be over and we'll forget it when, during the event, but people are, uh, it's going to take a generation to forget this experience. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Any other question? Seems like they have students from Qatar University. I don't know if they have a question. Umayma, any question? Thank you. Thank you very much for this opportunity. It's okay. not a question, it's more of a comment. I would like for us to say thank you very much, Mr. Ibrahim, for um, this amazing um, presentation. It's so insightful. Now, I think passing by um, Uthumama, I'll look at it with totally new eyes. It's really fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, more of a comment towards what Roberto was saying and COVID-19 and going back to the way things were. I had the opportunity to be part of the um, Asian Games, and I would expect that during the overlay design, when the time comes for the games to happen, there may be a few new rules that would be implemented because overlay is pretty huge project in itself. Um, but yeah, it is, it is a big question that's happening nowadays and I'll be very excited to know how the overlay design would be um, implemented on al Sumama. It would be fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. And definitely the overlay, it's a specialty. It looks like you've gone through it before and it, uh, the, you know, as much as you plan something for, uh, whether it's for the legacy and so on, but as time goes by, your needs and your requirements may differ for addition, additional buildings, different functions. So I think flexibility uh, has to happen in such, especially such a large scale uh, projects. Absolutely, thank you for that. Thank you very much. Team Junaid has something to say. Go ahead, Salim. Yeah. Hi, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum. Mr. Jada, this is an honor to speak to you it, itself. <laughs> so I just wanted, I just wanted to, you know, being being a part of the stadium itself, I'm I'm on the on the team of the projects, and um, I've been looking at it every day, and the only one thing that always kind of amuses me. Is like you know, looking at the gaffia, it's something which you which you knit with your hand, or it's something you know, it's it's a knitting, it's a tailoring thing, and with the threads going thicker and thinner, and when they come closer, it forms that special form. Uh, the the openings and the the openings go reducing at at the end, and then then they increase at the at the center. It's such a complicated thing, and it's. And it always amuses me that how was it possible for someone to actually, you know, starting from the point of observing this and then putting it on paper as a sketch and then further developing it. Uh, I, I could not really imagine how it was possible to take that all from the journey of something which is more of a natural looking thing into a proper form geometry which could be executed at that scale. Uh, actually, I can. I wish I can claim all of this for myself, but uh, I think this is the teamwork. I mean, the the structural genius, the the architect uh, FIA out of uh, Madrid uh, was. Uh, he he did the the FIFA compliance and he, he helped develop it. The, the guy. He is the gentleman who did the stadium that recently announced opened in the Qatar Foundation. Uh, and he's doing also the stadium, uh, the Rasa Ba'bud, the, uh, the container stadium, and done several stadiums. And his presence was with the team also has added tremendous value on, on how do we put this together and to how actually, usually, you know, architects around the world or critics, they, they would uh, criticize a literal translation of an element. And I was really scared of the literal, but even as literal as this may be, it looks so contemporary, it looks so modern in its own right. So it worked out uh, with a little bit of ambitions and hard work, but uh, some of it is, I guess, destiny. It happens. 
Yes, because most of the times the literal does not translate into the actual literal. It 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 looks something different, but this one does look like a graph. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and it is the, the beauty lies in the detail that it was actually imitated in a very very proper way. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful thing. It's a marvelous thing. Thank you. You know that your stadium in the southwest of uh, the corner, southwest of the city of Doha. So if you cross the road in the south, you are in Wakra. If you cross the road in the west, you are in Bayan. So you are close to three minutes to You know that? Yeah. Good. Yeah. So you are, in, you are in the edge, in the corner. After that, it's not Doha. Wow, okay. <laughs> That's a good plan. And not far away, really, from Wakra also. From, uh... Just across the road, you are in Wakra municipality. Not the Wakra yeah, city, I mean but the, Wakra. The Zaha st Stadium. Municipality. Not far away. No, Zaha Stadium is in the, uh, the city of Wakra. Yeah, yeah. You are, you are in the, uh, the edge. Adjacent to the uh, municipality of Wakra. The edge, yes. You are in the edge, so you can get the or uh, or the, uh, the people who will come to to your stadium will be from from the three municipality. All the people from <laughs> Doha, Rayyan, Wakra. So you have advantage here. Yeah. You have uh, advantage. Uh, I I think we still have. We are running out of the time. We still have few minutes. Okay. If anyone wanna ask any question, if not, we need to wrap up. Any comment from you, Brian, if there are no questions? Well, I just uh, thank you, really, for your uh, effort, uh, Abdullah and your team, really, to make the, the hub real, uh, an inspiring uh, for to put together all these talks. It's really uh, a self-effort, uh, you and, I mean, the, the wonderful team that uh, working together to put something like this as an intellectual gathering. Uh, it's an effort that we all have to really support uh, for it to continue and to grow. I, I definitely salute you for, for uh, pushing and being patient, patient to put such a thing together. Well done, and we like to see this continue, and we would love to support it in any way we can. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Architect Wahim. Thanks for uh, all the attendees for being with us today. So today we, ha we have, we have uh, participants from uh, India, Belgium, China, Tunisia, Algeria. From really? Almost, yes, from all over the world, the world. Almost we have more than 15 nationalities today in the talk. It was a great talk, Architect Ibrahim. Inspiring. We were awaiting for this talk since long time to, to see the wonderful stadium because we, we just ran a outside of it and it was uh, looking so good so uh, wonderful now we are a bit inside we hope one day we can go inside it thank you so much thanks all the participants and stay connected we have more events soon thank you everyone thank, thank you. you thank you